Amen. Anyway, are you ready for the word of God? Are you ready for the word? I, I'm, I'm planning not to take a lot of time as usual. Amen. Uh, I assure you, <laughs> I'll take 45 minutes of a preacher and, and it will be a preacher's time. Now, we began on a series called the Mind Battles. Mind Battles. And this is very key and very important uh, because of the things that are happening. I was sitting with a father and he told me, when the church preaches the truth of the gospel, people will be delivered even from depression. So when the moment people are given the truth, depression will not be an issue. And we began by seeing that man is a tetrapite being. That's a big word, meaning that you have a body, you have a soul, and you have a spirit. Hallelujah. And I've seen one of us, just, and this lady is doing an amazing job. Um, she's, she's translating sermons into books. I'm, I'm already doing, let, let's appreciate them, amen. And she's from Lemuru, so I'm happy to see you. So these are other books, amen. So we are ready to partner, have your seat, amen. I'm already going through the, the book called Family Battles. It's already in a book, 150 pages. So I, I looked at it and said, you mean I teach all these things? I, I, was, I was writing notes from my book, Jesus. Because there are things I say under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. They are not in my notes. Okay, so thank you. Eh? So that book is coming. And that one you have to buy for every family member. In fact, she told me the editor was editing the book and he used to edit and write some notes and then go at home and pray those notes. The editor. So Ilianza Nakubariki editor. Na weweje. Apana. So let's begin. You are a tetrapite being. I'm teaching because uh, these are things that have to be understood. You have a body, you have a soul and you have a spirit. We say that. And we say that there is the constituent of the spirit. I mean the soul. And your soul has the mind and also the senses. So your soul has two things. The mind is part of your soul. And then there's something we always call the sensory realm. Somebody says sensory realm. This is where you operate on the senses. But in the mind, we have six elements that can be divided into two. We have the intellect or the logic. That's part of the mind. The intellect and the logic where all the data, information is captured. Then we have the emotions, the seat of emotions. And we have will, will. And we discovered that all your actions are dictated by what you know and what you feel. So I can never change a man until I change what they know and what they feel. And then in your mind, you have consciousness subconsciousness and memory and allow me to say this your character and personality is highly influenced by your memories you are a product of your events of life if today you meet a person that was raised in an abusive home it will take a lot of time to change how that person views life and views themselves that's why I said one of the reasons people do courtship, it's not a feeding program. It is a data analysis forum. So when a person advises you for coffee, appear as a specimen, not as a girlfriend. Be, and, 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 and not as a boyfriend. Because at that level, you must weigh your burdens. And ask yourself if you have the grace to bear burden. There are all these only one thing that will change when you get married. And that is your waistline. In both centers. <laughs> so don't think that you'll carry a person who lived in an environment for 25 years and you expect them to change in one month. Pastor Rashid. You must have what we call background intelligence. What are the events of your lives? What are the encounters of your life? And we are going to handle this matter with the young people. The power of courtship. So that you don't pay for mistakes of other men if you're a man. If the last man left and broke the heart of that lady, you might pay for that mistake. The one who left was a suspect. So this lady has a philosophy called all men are dogs and trust no man. And you are a man. 
So you don't need prayer. You need wisdom. Seller. We meet on that day. Am I making sense? So we are a product of our events. Memories. And that's why it is good for a man to begin to have encounters of God. Because they eliminate the former encounters that were there. Allow me to say this because I never touched on the spirit. But in two minutes I can say. Your spirit also is divided into two compartments. Your spirit is divided into two compartments. There is the compartment of intuition and the compartment of power. Now these are big words. But I'm going to explain them. There is the compartment of into, intuition and the compartment of power. Let me surprise you. Everyone under the sound of my voice has an ability in their spirit to prophesy. And they have an ability in their spirit to manifest power. That's the reality. And I'll even go further. The reason why the gifts of the spirit are not given to pastors but the members is because if you have a spirit you can manifest power or prophecy or both. Allow me to say this with a lot of shame. I know myself. I know myself. I know. I'm saying this shamefully because I know if I, not if I can be serious. If I purpose to be permanently serious, I've touched these levels. It is not easy. Because these things are handled with spiritual display. And that's why I need small groups. And that's why I need some of you to mature. So that some of the things come up with gender is square up. My work will be to get in the office, pray and read the word. Now because of many distractions, I have no time. That's what I'm saying if I'm, if I'm left to operate like the apostles. That we give ourselves to prayer and the word. Some of these things will be possible. Tell your neighbor mature quickly. So that I can hand over some roles. Are we together? I don't need to be wondering how rent will be paid. I need to know there are men that have catered for that. The next project is catered for. And mine will be to study and seek the face of God. I'll give you a good example. Someone came in the office during the week. A lady. Pastor Jimmy dealt with the lady in a different room. Gave her details. Boo, 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 boo. She came where I was. The you sense that God is speaking to you, you have to acknowledge you also have your senses. So if God is ministering to me about Roy, I don't need to begin by pointing him like this. I'm saying Roy, I hear God. Because if he does not open his spirit, I may not journey. So the best thing is to tell him, Roy, I am not sure. But I think the Holy Ghost is saying. And that approach even if because we don't see in detail, we see in parts. I can see wrong guy, but God is talking about Karen. So I'll tell him, I don't know why, but I'm seeing wrong guy. And he'll be like, I wrong guy. Say, no, my mother lives in Karen. Okay, I think then I didn't see that. But I'm not missing. So, so the law began to open up. So what I'm trying to say is that in your spirit, there is a part of power. And there is a part of prophecy. And that thing, if well nurtured and cultivated, you can walk in it. Some of you, the part of intuition is manifesting as dreams. Pastor Mimi Water, Nainakua, Jesus, begin now to pray. Inject prayer. That thing is prophetic. You will move from dreaming to seeing. The reason why you are dreaming, you are too busy. God has to wait you in your subconscious to speak. Allow me to say this. Dream is the least level of communication. Mungu 
Kuwa na ngoja anga utulie, uache anxiety, uache kiherehere, ulale, alafu akwambie sasa. So tell your neighbor, neighbor, come out of dream level. That's why the Bible says, an old man, they are tired, will <laughs> will do what? Dream dreams. Meaning that they are real ones. So God has to, they have many things in life. God has to wait for them to rest and then release a dream. So that's you. Now let's begin to look at some of the attacks. I'm calling this the battle for the mind. These are external missiles released targeting your mind. External missiles, arrows released targeting your mind. So this battle has nothing to do with what is inside. It has everything to do with the powers outside. The powers outside. So these are things that meet you in life. You are just doing life commonly and something comes to you. And the moment it shows up, it begins to affect you and the attack is targeting the mind. Allow me to say this. Words travel as energies, life and spirit. Words travel as energies, life, death and spirit. Words travel as energies. Words are not just vowels. They are not R, A, E, O, U. That is grammar. In the realm of the spirit, words are life or death or spirits or energies. I want you to capture that very well. Even in heaven, let's look at Revelation 8.4. In heaven, prayers don't appear as grammar. And smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. Now this was an angel who used to burn incense in the presence of God. And he carries the prayers of the saints. So meaning that these are not vowels. If they can be carried and appear in the presence of God, they are not vowels. They appear as a form of energy in the presence. That as incense is poured, the intercessions are poured. Let's look at John 6.63. John 6.63. The Bible says, it is the spirit who gives what? That is capital S. The flesh profits nothing. The words, what? The words, this is Jesus. That I speak to you are spirit, small s. And they are life. So whatever Jesus uttered came as an impartation and as life. In Acts 10 44, I believe. In Acts 10 44, let's begin to look now. The engine has begun. Hi. Acts 10 44. While Peter was still speaking, what? This was what happened. The Holy Ghost fell. Ay, 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 ay. Speech provoked impartation. Because whatever he was speaking was not verbs and nouns. The man was releasing a speech of life. That's why the Bible says, in your mouth, you carry the power, not the words. The power of life and death. But we know what is in your mouth is not a tongue. It is words. Those words are characterized as power. So there are things you utter and they become death to another. There are things you utter and they become life. Am I making sense? So words are not just vowels. Maneno tu si aiou ni zaidi. There is something more to words. And that's why the battle to the mind, it is a battle that is castigated by mind, by words. Oh, welcome. Amen. Now I'm beginning to know members. This one is a teacher in alliance. So come on, kwana dream ya kwenda alliance. Unaeza enda tu alliance, urodi. At least umenda alliance. Hallelujah. Karibu sana. And she's a teacher of English. So grammar is on the check. So words, eh? In literature, these are not nouns. Are we together? Are we together? Ambia, ambia jirani, kuna siku moja pasta takutaja. I've seen you in the spirit. Hallelujah. 
Now, now listen, are you getting me? So the man was just preaching and then there was an impartation. The Holy Ghost fell because words travel. Words travel. They carry energy. Let me just give a good example. A man curses another person and that negative energy interferes with the systems of life. Those are not, that, though that's not English. Those are vowels that carry power. Ah, from today you'll understand there are things in your life that are a product of utterance. And you will not be careless. There are times when men feel down. There are times when men, it is not mood swinging. Have you ever woken up? You, are, you have a good job. Nothing is wrong, but you just feel you are. You are just bored. You can't place a finger on a matter. Unasikia tu umeboeka. Hakuna kitu umefanyiwa mbaya. But unasikia tu, hauna energy life in such a matter. People have gathered and they are not speaking well of you. It has ever happened. The first time suicide ever, suicide has crossed in my mind twice. The first time it was an ex, became a motivational speaker, I backslid. But the second time, suicide crossed in my mind. I was a preacher in the morrow. The church was three months old. Doing very well. And I was, we used to live fifth floor, the upper room, literally. And every midnight, I love studying the skies. Because the Bible says, the heavens declare their glory. So I like looking at the skies to see the glory. And I have intelligence of clouds interpretation. Leave that to me. Everyone with his level. I see things in clouds and God communicates to me. And at that time, I saw an image of a cloud that had hidden. It was a day of a moon and there was an image of a dog. On the cloud, I saw a head, a body and a tail. And then the moon could not shine. So it was so dark. And at that time, something crossed in my mind. Are you really called? Is God really there? Is this what you want to do in life? Preaching of all the things. And then I looked down and something told me, Nasu Jerusha. And the voice was so real. And then I had an inner voice telling me, pray in the Holy Ghost. So I closed my eyes and I began to pray in tongues. The Lord opened my eyes and I saw men in white gowns with a candle and my photo poster that we had put for advertisement. They had placed it there and there were candles and they were cursing me at night, midnight. It was on Friday. That's why I began praying on midnight because I discovered many demonic covenants happen midnights of Friday. Even Freemasons meet on Friday for their sacrifice. And they meet at the midnight hour. So we know what we are dealing with. So, uh, and, uh, and I sense that's why there was such a demonic cloud of desperation, despair, and giving up. Can I tell you, as I began to pray, I opened my eyes and I saw the cloud lifted from the moon. And the Lord told me, you will shine. Things began to happen because people were gathered and they were cursing and cursing and cursing. Whatever they were releasing were not words. They were energies in my heavens. And a discouragement came upon me. And I felt like quitting. So let me give you a secret. The moment you sense a demonic discouragement. Pray in the Holy Ghost. You don't know who has gathered for your cause. You don't know where they have sat. You don't know what they are uttering. And you know people speak. Even when they are not supposed to speak. I remember a man of God lost his child. And then they began to say, Mtoto ametolewa sadaka. You know it, a man is mourning. And there is a rumor that ametolewa sadaka. You can imagine how piercing and discouraging those words are. Are you getting me? And so there are levels you cannot ignore the speech of men. And I'm not saying once you on Facebook. There is a place muna jibizana. Enter in your closet. Put, put worship. Begin to cut every tongue, every influence. Anything that inspires their speech, disconnect that energy. That thing is neutralized. Hi. Okay. I'm teaching you secrets of survival. Some of these levels of depression is gossip. There has been too much negativity in your heaven. 
that you operate and are condemned heaven. Because that's what men do. So words are spirits, they are energies, they are life or death. Are we together? And many people who sit down, they don't speak well of you. That's the truth. It is rare for men to praise men. Especially the culture of Kenya. It is revealed by our politics. And I'm not here to be oppressive. I'm not here to, what do I call it? I'm not here to, to, to beat drums for any man. Kibaki is remembered for his legacy. Are we together? How many know we were almost not giving the second term he entered by, fire, by force? Yes. The man delivered, but his last term, he was the most criticized. Then today, we say, Kibaki era. We are hypocrites. Because the culture of Kenya is very simple. We don't tell men what we will do. We criticize what you are doing. And then we portray ourselves. You know, I was looking at some bloggers. You know, now the nation has begun politics. And now they are saying, this government is useless. We're even losing in the Olympics. I'm saying, how does government enter when a man is running? You see, now you even criticize things that don't touch. So I said, so when you get power, they will win. Okay, then they began to win. Anyway, but I'm trying to, because we are Kenyans and Kenyans are business. Are we together? That's how we talk. The moment we want something, we discredit the person. We don't appreciate what they have done. We, we attack, assassinate, and kill you. Then we now front ourselves as the better solution. So we don't have a celebration culture in this nation. It is not there. And if celebration is not there, then we have a criticizing culture. So our words are more negative. Let me even tell you. Among the young people in Sheng, we speak opposite. A church in Kwaje Emza in Kwampaya. Church in Kwampaya. But that man is saying, it's not saying Mbaya. And I say, Meli Kwapoa. Maze unatesa. Unatesa. Now, how do you use Kutesa? Na say yo na kwambi unaka smart. Unasumbua. Say yo na kwambi ukona pesa. I don't know if you, I, I hope I'm communicating that it reaches a place that our, we are so negative in our conversation that negativity becomes the explanation of positivity. And now the law of words is that they don't lose their significance and they don't lose their meaning though you had a different intention. I remember one day I made a joke and someone told me, Pazi una joani pastor. So she said, that is a joke to you. But a vessel has made a joke. That's how I stopped being a comedian. But there used to be a comedian, guys. Ah, you need to know my life. Go and watch LOL K24. It's on YouTube. You might not come on Sunday. So, uh, so, so I discovered... Now, now I had to look for suits and look serious because people are not serious with my message. But I'm saying words are not just words. I want that point to settle. Are we together? So that to, from today you'll be sensitive with what you utter. Now you will ordain a blessing. You must begin to learn how to speak as a kingdom term. Our words are audited in the spirit because they carry power, they carry energy. Are we together? So tell your neighbor, neighbor, from today, before you speak, meditate. Because your words are powerful. Are we together? Una in the interview, you are supposed to, to pass and then you want to identify with the interviewers. You have just cancelled your blessing. Sit with them and tell them, God leads me to my inheritance. Come on, Because you know your words carry power. They carry life. The world was formed by words. 
God spoke and the Holy Ghost implemented. So you live in an economy that was established by utterance. <laughs> so you can never fix the world with emotions. You can only fix a world that was created by the word. By releasing the word in your messed up environment. Here is not what we feel. It's what we utter. And guess what? God gave us the raw material of creation. His word. And gave us the force of implementation. The Holy Ghost. That's why the Bible says you shall decree a thing. Not pray. Prayer is when you converse with God. Declaration is when you handle matters in your realm. And the Bible says, and it shall be established. You decree. Now the problem is that you must understand the system of royalty. To understand decrees are not made by children, they are made by kings. I'll give you a good example. If our president wakes up. And he has a meeting and says, I close Kiambu until further notice. He will go back. I tell you the next thing, you'll see barriers all over. <laughs> Declaration. Why? Because a man knows his office. He closed Kisumu. Okay. <laughs> okay. You, you are humble. God is saying, those words you are limiting. That's where creation power is resident. That's why I wonder what <laughs> I don't know what you create with there is a level rules and verdicts are made by declaration. Right now we were just programming the month of August. Are we together? Your decree is the month of favor. I cannot be sick. I am walking in divine possibilities. In Jesus name, seller, and you walk in August. That's how we survive in this kingdom. It's not how I feel. Nothing may change, but I've released a ruling. That ruling must begin to navigate my realities. God said, let there be. Then he came for investigations. I said it was good. Then he went back. He said, let there be. Then he came the second day. It was done. The third day. That's how you need to live. You declare, then supervise. I'm not teaching you theory. I think Mzee Kanyinge found us when we had a wall here and a hammer. Those who know me, they know how we used to pray. I used to come here at strange hours, midnight, and guess my prayers, how I used to pray. I was not telling God, give me. No. I used to come here. Remember one day there was, we didn't have floor, kulikuwa na nyasi uko. Tulikuwa tumenunua nyasi, hey, ya kubutify kanisa. Na Francis alikuwa na ngombe. Bona sifeza na. So Francis alikritisize yo nyasi. Mbake kachukua chakula. So, <laughs> so kulikuwa na nyasi hapo. And I remember the church was empty. Kulikuwa na tukokoto. So one day kuna usiku mama gift alipiga magoti akaamuka na tumuchanga nikamwambia floor inakuja tutakuwa tunalala flat So guess how I used to come to pray there were no doors you see the way the windows are yes those windows without anything so we had as they said my father's house there are many rooms this one there were many entrances <laughs> So I used to come at night Park my car there. There was no fence. And one day, there was a madman here. A Kyoto moto. A madman. So as I was praying, I heard, fuchu, fuchu, fuchu. Then I checked. I saw a man with beards and a skirt. And it's as if he was serving his altar. So, I began to pray out of fear. Something told me, come by and by. Ufalme ya ukweli leo itajulikana. So I increased my voice and guess I was praying. Paros kapaya kataya. The man did not leave. <laughs> but how I used to pray 
I will come in the church and tell God, Father, thank you. We are buying new sound. We are putting screens. I used to organize the church in my mind. And then I will speak those things into existence. And they began to show up. These guys can tell you. I always ask them, what do you want? They send photos. Then I say, it is good I have seen. So now my prayer is not seeking. It is creating. Because I know the power of words in the mouth of a believer. Who has the nature of his father. Every animal gives to his kind. You are a kind of God. God survived by words. You can only survive by what you utter. Are you getting me? Are you getting me? I've gone through life and I know. So I used to come and declare, Father, we are doing. We are doing. Thank you because it is done. Because I know, I knew the distance between the object and manifestation is time and resources. And I knew resources are not in heaven. I had to create their existence before showing up. Hallelujah. May you master how to use your mouth in the right way. And how powerful it is according to Isaiah 55 10. Maybe we can look at it. Then I'll give you the six things that come upon me. Isaiah 55 10. Let me show you. The Bible says, For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud, it may give seed to the sower and bread to them. Let's look at 11. Everybody read. Let me tell you the truth. There is nothing like a powerful preacher. It is a preacher that carries a powerful word. It is not his word. This word. That's the secret. Let this word dwell in you richly. Because this word can never go back empty. God is not a waste of resources. This is the raw material of creation. You have it. The possibilities of life are locked up in what you know. Are you getting it? The word of God, it, anytime rain comes down, something must grow. So anytime the word of God is uttered with conviction and understanding, something must be established. That's why the Bible says, he sent for this word and did what? Healed. So what was that word? It was the word of healing. Now you remember there is a man that met Jesus and said, I know a system in the Old Testament where you can declare healing and it happens. He said, I have a sick servant. You don't need to come to my house Send the energy of healing by speech. Aye. Jesus said, I've never seen such faith. Okay. That was not a Jew. But he benefited from what Jews ought to benefit. Am I? Anita is here. We prayed for what was it? a young boy in America. And a girl. And they got healed. In a phone call. Less than five minutes. There is no barrier in the spirit. We said, let there be healing. Pa! The energy of healing manifested. Men can gossip you in America and you die of depression in Kibera. So, it is not about distance. It is not about the next neighbor. It is about the reality of that realm. Okay, let's look at the five, the six things that constitute to this, I call them the six missiles of, of the battles that are released. The first one is called the missile of gossips. Gossip. Hey, what is a gossip? To talk idly about the affairs of others. Gossip. To talk idly about the affairs of others. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Two things are very key. Idleness and other people affairs. That is gossip. So it tells me great men discuss ideas. Idle men, and for lack of a better word, useless men discuss people. Be sensitive what you do with your idle time. You might be having headache on other people's behalf. Things that don't concern you. Why is pastor wearing a red tie? 
wewe vaa yako ya blue tuachane kila mtu na testi yake haleluya amen have you ever realized there are people who are so concerned about other people affairs they are the best gossipers and gossip is contagious gossip is sweet i stand as your pastor to say guilty as charged i have gossiped and so are you i tell you this is the case you say if you be righteous if you have ever sat down in idleness and talked about the affairs of another person you are a gossiper tell your neighbor you are one now tell that neighbor neighbor if you sat to listen you are a gossiper are you getting me and these are very serious matters let us look at psalms let us begin all these the scriptures i'm going to read quickly i want to take every matter with around five minutes proverbs 11 13 the issues of gossip are addressed in the book of proverbs majority because it's a matter of wisdom the bible says a gossip betrays a confidence but a trustworthy man keeps a secret that's a fact many betrayals happen when you entrusted people with some truth and then they made those truth public and you are wondering if I wanted the matter to be public, I would have gone on Facebook Live. And there are, there are things they say. If a man can tell you about others, be rest assured, they will tell others about you. If they have the confidence of telling you about others, they have also the audacity of telling others about you. Many gossipers have opinion about everyone except themselves. They have an opinion about everyone and everything. They have a way of exaggerating the story because they have a tongue that sweetens lies. They have expression. These are supposed to be Nigerian actors. They even have a posture. How they sit. How they whisper. How they turn their eyes. They know when to go where and when to go low. And you are two of you. Where how do you? Where how do you? Who you pastor? How do you? And I tell you they know how. And they are very convincing. And the best gossip is the one that you are told, no, si ah, ah. When it is sealed with that amen of si mtu, I tell you, your heels will burn for the next culprit. And you will seal it as it was sealed. Even you begin, Nikona kitu, no, si mtu. Let's have a church, amen. Are we together? Let's look at a scripture in the book of Proverbs 16, 28. Ah, a perverse man stirs up deception and a gossip separate. How many relationships have been messed up because of gossip? That you, and the worst part is that someone told you what your best friend said. And you think the one telling you is your friend. That's another gossiper. Run away. Your best friend and that person are in the same committee. Gossipers. And it hurts you when people you entrusted with information cannot be entrusted anymore. I once shared my story with a pastor. 2013, God had broken. I was going through depression. I was alone, had more than 3,000 names in my phone book, nobody to call. I was in a crowd, but very lonely. Because when you're in the media, you are among people, but no one is with you. You are just with them. And so, I was a pastor. Again, leadership. People expect so much from you. I was doing high school missions. And so, here is a lady. Everyone knew I was dating this lady. I was very loud, public about it. The media began to get interest on this story. And we had broken up. So, I had to keep quiet. I couldn't sleep. And the worst part is that you can be sleepy, but you're not sleeping. You turn. 72 times. All style. You sleep A to Z. A, B, C, D, up to Z. Nothing. Sleep is not coming. You play golf. You play hockey. You know. <laughs> Nothing. And I said, let me share with a man of God. He was a, he was a man. So we were driving, going for a mission. And I told him, I'll not preach. I'm not in a good state. And I told him, sir, I've fallen from grace. I've been drinking. 
I'm going through a phase in life and I want you to walk with me. And I thought you would pray with me. And he said, I was jolly. So we went for the meeting. The next thing he never called me. The next thing he told all the missioners. None of them should engage me in mission. And the next thing he went to all the schools. There is even schools they can't call me today. Because they were told I'm a drunkard. I'm a womanizer. And I'm a hypocrite. So the doors were closed. So where was I? I was here. So instead of pulling me back, I was pushed. And I fell seriously. It took God to redeem me. Because now at that time, you close all the channels of opening up. Because now you don't know who is who. Sometimes you share with a pastor. And that's why sometimes I don't like counseling members. So that I don't share your story on Sunday. So I like it when it is handled on family levels and pastoral so that at least if I have to teach something I don't feel I can't touch this matter because I know it's an issue with someone. Are you, are you seeing why you need to belong to a family? Yes, now. So what happened to this guy? He kicked me out. I was broken. My stories began to spread. It was like bushfire. And I felt so bad. But God is a God who restores. And from that time, I never felt comfortable to share with any pastor what I was going through. But something told me also, don't become that pastor in the future. Where people tell you their problems. And then you begin to call a board meeting. And say, guys, guys, spiritual warfare, stay alert. Stay alert. Lady number so and so, they are not okay. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, this is a family. We are all in different levels of growth, different battles. Huh. Let's look at Proverbs 18.8. 8. Am I helping anyone? So don't become the one that spreads. Listening to gossip is like, give me that in message Bible. I want to prove to you. Now I told you both of you are victims. The listener and the transmitter. Look that in message. Everybody relate. Listening to gossip is like eating cheap candy. Do you really want junk like that in your belly? It doesn't help you. It is not healthy. It is poisonous. So you who does not gossip others, but listen, this is what you eat. Cheap candy. And this thing I'm saying is, it's an external because I think it will hurt you when you hear what people were saying about you. And many people that gossip us are not strangers. Do you know that? It doesn't hurt when you hear a bunch of drunkards were talking about you. But it hurts when names and faces are placed. And you know that you know these are people that I need to call my sisters. They know too much. Let's look at the other one. Proverbs 20:19. Are you learning something? A gossip betrays a confidence. So avoid a man who talks. Confidence is betrayed. It's betrayed. Let's look at 26.20. 26, when you run out of wood, the fire goes out. When the gossip ends, the quarrel. So that tells you, gossip is like firewood. Is what stars quarrel. And let me tell you, many gossipers will never reveal their source. There is always a synonymous person. What would you? Sita kuambia, lakini where to do? Where to do? Nani al kuambia? Akuna aja. Why? They know. They are bringing fires. One day we had a case, and this is the best way to deal with gossip, by the way. Let me give you the best way. Bring their gossiper. And the one that you are being told about, put them in the same room. Ask them, Ulukuna ni ambia nini kusu yu? Eh? We did that with my wife. Hi. There was a case. Uyu ya meambiwa, uyu ya meambiwa, uyu ya meambiwa. So, and the culprit was one. So I told my wife, call all of them and call the culprit. In that meeting, the matter shifted. She, she said, Mimi naona atakama ni spiritual warfare, nataka kuenda seven days of fasting and prayer. Uh, Katoloni, 
mimi hata mambo kama hiyo naona ni kama kuzingiziwa and i tell you that's how the meeting ended and that's the best way to handle gossip and that person will never come because the point is to keep that thing and when gossip graduates it becomes empowered by leviathan spirit and this is what let me tell you this is what kills the power of intercessors are you an intercessor listen to me be aware of gossip because out of the same mouth cannot flow life and death you can't worship yahweh and gossip his sons the devil cannot fight your prayer activity you sweat in prayer but the devil i call them diffusers of prayer hey you have prayed 24 hour voltage and then on saturday at 12 five minutes gossip you have diffused all all you did in the 24 hours is good for aerobics body fitness and face you just you you are sweating so pimples were eliminated but spiritually all the power died tell your neighbor neighbor the devil does not just fight with flesh these are now principles. Are we together? Let's look at the second one, slander. Today I'll finish on time. I have that grace today. Slander, I'm watching. Slander, what is slander? False and miscellaneous statement. False and miscellaneous. Malicious, not miscellaneous. Oh, Jesus. Miscellaneous in a kwanga budget ya Rusi. Malicious. Kifanya Rusi utajua kuna tango. Miscellaneous budget. Hallelujah false and malicious statement designed to injure your reputation false and malicious statements designed to injure one's reputation now what is a reputation a reputation is a capital of transaction what do i mean by that reputation is your name the integrity your name bears today you are doing business you've never stolen from anyone and then someone begins to tell. Let me tell you how people kill reputation. Akwangi mbaya sana lakini chunga pesa yako. Yo tunakupeka ma advice out of wisdom. Already my reputation is damaged. Are we together? And I tell you, men don't become men overnight. There is labor. There is tears. There is a lot that goes to eat. But there are people that wait for you at the top. And they deal with your head. They were not there when you are crying. They were not there when you are building. But now they rise as criticizers. And you can sense there is malice. Whatever they are saying is not factual. It is false. I am going through such a battle right now. Hey. Someone just cooked up a story. And they have decided that story is the story. So I know what I am talking about. Hallelujah. And I can tell you how I'm dealing with them. Prayer. Hallelujah. And someone called me and told me, Pastor, you know your story? This story kwanza. This story ni mzuri sana. Juu ni Pastor T. He me, do you know what it has taken? He said, na juasa, this story kona interest. I have evidences of the matter. <laughs> I'm telling them, this is the evidence. Will, will you go and say lies? Can I be like, you know, you are watch out to say me, who could you attend? Come be a boss. Ule mungu alinita. Where guza? You know, there's a culture in this nation. Okay, to a kitchen, why? Me come on, go to the assassination. Are you getting it? Nelly Mambia, e judgment to cover your head. If it goes public, your judgment will be public. If it is private, your judgment will be private. Choose your judgment now. No, you need to understand some of these things. Are you getting me? Some of you have built. You, people may call it a brand. But that name has come from far for someone to place your product on buyers beware. They don't even know you. And you have, they don't know your tears. That, that is slander. Someone who does not even know this church. You come and find cars parked outside. Unasikia, hii nakani ya madevoshi. Badu na wafila mejufungia kajela. Electric fence kwa kanisa wewe. Kwa ni ya muamini malaika. <laughs> By the way, every ministry that rises, mkuna level mnafikanga, watu wanaanza kuambia ni nyinyo na mashaitani. 
Mimi mimi ni village anifikia because it doesn't concern me. Kwa sasa huku tunaombanga Friday midnight. Si tunaweza ambiwa. Maisha maana ya Friday. Na huyo pastor ako na gari huwezi muona ndani. Yote iko na giza. Huyo. <laughs> Wakiomba na lugha atuelewi. Hiyo ni kanisa. Si waombe mchana. <laughs> Naanza kutembea hii town. Mbaka ukinunua soda kwa duka ya mtu ana sanctify pesa. Baba na se. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know I'm speaking real things that people go through and the tongue of man is poisonous. People can slander you. People can kill your reputation. People can bring you down. Let's look at a scripture in Psalms 15 from verse 1 to 5. Let's begin to see. Those who slander give me in the message bible. Those who slander this is what they deny themselves they cannot fellowship with God. God who gets invited to de- God This is God comma everybody read who gets invited to dinner at your How do we get on your guest list How this is a language of how do I get the audience of the father Now let's begin to look there are four of them Everybody read That's number one. Okay This is how you get the audience of Are you seeing something like speaking tongues No Let's look at the other one. Eh? Uh-huh. Eh? Uh-huh. Wisdoms. Have you realized in Africa we don't have a prayer issue? Yeah? I tell you you pray. You know the devil is in trouble, but we have problem with this issue. Now look at four. Read it well. Mawe ni fundi. Mato. <laughs> Enda u print is scripture. Uyeke hapo kwa loka yako. Fundi wa nguo. Fundi wa fundi. Ask your neighbor we ni fundi. Muambie this is your deliverance. <laughs> this is the truth. <laughs> Let's look at the fifth one. Make an honest living. Never take a bribe. You will never get black listed if you live like Now let's take this literally. You want to come and commune with God. You show up on the guest list and the angels said to one another, "Oh you are here. He's black listed. He's not truthful. Slanders men. He survives on bribe." So do you now see why sometimes as a church you go outside there steal from the poor? Then you are judged with a disease and then you look for a powerful prophet to pray for you with a seed. We can't have that. You are blacklisted. The only thing that can uplift that is when you begin to implement these things. Let's go quickly. I have 10 minutes literally. <sighs> This is what we call practical Christian living. Tell your neighbor neighbor. You may not hear anything deep, but this is what brings results in your life. This is what makes people look at you and say you are a child of God because this is where the world misses the mark and if we can perfect these things men will look at you and say these are children of God this will create the mark are we together let me just throw another one proverbs 10:18 proverbs 10:18 proverbs 10:18 i want to work with the time today we have prayers in the afternoon liars secretly hold hatred fools openly Okay let's read loudly eh Eh uh-huh. So what does I tell you Anyone that slanders is a fool according to the Bible Let's look at Proverbs 30:10 Proverbs 30:10 quickly Proverbs 30:10 Don't blow the whistle on your fellow worker behind there They will accuse you of being underhanded and then you will be the guilty one. Give me in NIV. Aha. Read it well. Let me bring it home. 
Have you ever seen men that create relationship with your seniors by accusation? There are people, they in, I'm not saying our praise and worship, they in praise and worship, but they can never report to their leader. They want to come and report directly to pastor. They are the ones. So, and, and there are ministries also which die when pastor opens a door and it looks you become his friend when you carry secrets of men. And that ministry can never live. Because what what a katana will gain favor na pa. So you are sent at the top by the quantity of gossip and slander. They are there. Even in the office. Am I speaking a the truth? There are people, they are, they are very close to the HR. And they have the files of everyone. You laugh with them, taking 10 o'clock tea. Even as they are talking to you, they are picking some information. And then at around 3, 3.30, wamejifungia na HR kwa karum. Alafu nasikia watu wanapromotiwa na HR anaanza kukuanalyze. Na labda ulikuwa unamwambia vile unafanyanga tu side hustle. Unaanza na wewe ndio accountant, inakaa nikaona ibanga pesa ya kampuni. Unaanza kufanywa ma audit za kimacho. Tu viatu. Ukikuja na hairstyle mpya, na siku hizo unapanga wapi do? You know, some hey, some statements ought to make you a lot. I've been in the corporate world, I know. It looks like you, you have to stay in a perennial status of suffering. You begin to make it in life. Some people feel. And even some of these, if you're a HR, please, never make the CEO your friend by betraying men. No one lives there permanently. One day, I'll be at our motoni. And you'll be at our masses. To tambio to pay any feedback. It is there. We will fulfill the Bible. We will curse you and you will pay for it. We will write as we say, Lord, according to Proverbs 30 verse 10, behold the hour cometh of cursing our HR. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. Be good in all you do. Number three, accusations. Accusations. What is accusation? To charge with an offense or blame. To charge with an offense or blame. Accusations. The difference between slander is that in slander it is false and malicious. In accusation, you, you look like you have made the verdict. Are we together? In a kanikama, kila unasema ni ukweli ata kama unadata. And it looks like it is over. The verdict has been made. And that's the truth. And whatever that guy is saying is a lie. Revelation 12, 10. There are two ministries in eternity. Of intercession and accusation. One is led by Jesus. The other one is led by the devil. You can choose who to partner with. Either you are under intercessory ministry. Or accusatory then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has come, has been cast down. Now, it was an angel that gave John revelation. So the devil used to accuse other angels day and night. And the work of accusation is the work of the devil. Let us look at the book of Luke 23 verse 1 to 5. The pathway of taking Jesus to the cross was accusation. Never joke with accusation. Then the whole multitude of them arose and led him to Pilate. Continue. And they began to accuse him saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation. It was a lie. And forbidding to pay taxes to Caesar, it was a lie. Saying that he himself is Christ, a king, it was a lie. Then Pilate asked him, saying, are you the king of the Jews? He answered him and said, it is as you say. This is how you deal with Islam. When they tell you Jesus never accepted to be the Messiah. They say it is Matthew Luke that told him. But he told the, the one, is as you say, but he clarified and said my kingdom is not of this earth and the Jews are not these men that came from Abraham 
The Jews are men that live in faith like Abraham. So you are a Jew. The seed of faith. Okay. I know that one. It's a topic for another day. Am I? Now accusation. Let's look at this. Let's look at four. I'm finishing. So Pilate said to the chief priest and the crowd, I find no fault in this. Nah. But they were the more fear saying, he stirs up the people teaching throughout all today, beginning from Galilee to this place. What took Jesus to the cross was the accusation of man. I'm, I'm talking about, I know he came to die for the sins, but it was the accusation that began to affect the systems and the system endorsed his death by the path of accusation. There are crosses you might face, not because you deserve them, but because of accusation. It is not easy. It is not easy. And this accusation created a perception upon the people that there were two thieves on the cross one saw Jesus from the level of accusation. The other one saw him from the level of eternity. One said to Jesus, save yourself. He didn't see the Messiah. He saw a rebellious culprit, a rebel on the cross. The other one saw the Son of God. What does accusation do? It tampers with your identity. That's why you cannot be quiet. The Bible says in Isaiah 54 that we have the power to accuse every tongue. To judge every time raised against us in accusation. Accusation can be so fierce that it becomes atmospherical. Let me explain. You are in a team of 10 workers. Something gets stolen. And all the 10 workers are new in the department. And you are the first suspect. And everyone feels you are the one. And then later the thing is recovered. And it is discovered you are very far from it. Because accusation can build up as an atmosphere. Are you getting me? Accusation has hindered men from entering to places. Because when they show up, that is the atmosphere that shows up. It partners with rejection. I Mungu kwanza kianza kukumake famous. Jua maombi. Maombi ya kwanza unombanga ni? Accusation. People, and, and men will accuse you even if they have nothing to accuse you. One of the tools of the enemy for accusation, it is your past. It is your past. Some of you mulikuwa muna kunywa muna panda juu ya meza. It's my life 18 till I die. Una dams. Squeeze when on a lead praise and worship. The moment to me anza kutokea kwa TV, kimutu kina pull video ya 2013, kinaweka 2021, in a manner to suggest you don't know this person. God will forgive your past, but the devil will keep your files. So be ready when you rise to the top. Hallelujah. Si tunaingia wakati wa siasa. Eh? Na kuambia utasikia mpaka golden bag scandals. Huyu alikula. Juu na kuanga ni accusations. Na ma files zinatolewa. But sisi tuko na shida. Yaani tunachaguanga ni mwizi mgani si mwizi sana. Ni Mungu atusaidie. So inakuanga ni kesi ya nani hakuiba sana. Sasa tumpe chance aibe zaidi. Okay. I'm telling your neighbor, neighbor. <laughs> Sometimes I speak as a Kenyan, not a pastor. Are we together? Are you seeing the power of accusation? Yes. So don't ignore it. Don't ignore it. Don't allow your past to haunt you. Don't allow. Everyone here has a past. Ask your neighbor, neighbor. Did you fall from heaven like manna? Just ask that neighbor. Mwambia neighbor adalablu kona matatu atujui. Sendio. Machora ki scorpion kwa mgongo. Tunashukuru mungu juya suti. Lakini you know that you know. Were it not for the Lord. It will be a different story. Are we together? And that's why the devil is the master of accusation. Let me show you a prayer. Let's look at Psalms 119.67-17. Quickly. I'm past my time. 
uh, Psalms 1969 to 70. Psalms 1969 to 70. And then we will look at Psalms 35 to 20. The Bible says, The proud have forgotten a lie against me, but I will keep your precept with my whole heart. Now look at 70. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in your... You see, the concept of accusation, um, the concept of accusation is to make sure that you don't walk in the precepts of the Lord. That is the concept. Psalms 35, 20. Psalms 35, 20. For they do not speak peace, but they devise deceitful matters against the quiet one in there. So these are people who all they spread about to is error. Let me show you the prayer that a man makes when he's accused. Psalms 109. Are you ready to read this prayer? Tell your neighbor it's in the Bible. Okay, we are going to read it. Anyone that accuses you, go and tell them, stop this habit or else Psalms 109 shall be your portion. Everybody read. Do not keep silent, O God, of my praise. For the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful have opened against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. They have also surrounded me with words of hatred and fought against me without. Are you seeing? What do I catch in In return for my love, they are my accusers, but I give myself to see what the man prayed. Thus they have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love. Uh -huh. Set a wicked man over him and let an accuser stand at his right hand. When he is judged, let him be found guilty and let his prayer become sin. Let his days be few and let another take his office. That is firing a man. Let his children be fatherless and his wife you have already killed the man. <laughs> Let his children continually be vagabonds and beg. Let them seek their bread also from their desolate places. Let the creditor seize all that he has and let strangers plunder his labor. Let there be none to extend mercy to him, nor let there be any to favor his fatherless children. Eh? Let his posterity be cut off and in the generation follow, let their name be blotted out. Let the iniquity of his fathers be remembered before the Lord. And let not the sin of his mother be. Hey. Okay. Read the last one. Now, this is a prayer I can't pray for anyone. Even my worst of enemies. But I want to assure you, it is captured in the Bible. To tell you that this can be a verdict of an accuser. When we say vengeance belongs to the Lord. It begins to tell you some of these things. Can be the judgment of them that accuse us. Can I even go further? Yes. Can I share this with a lot of wisdom. And I help you. All these things I'm reading. Never do it to a pastor. Run away. Not me alone. Any pastor you know. Don't gossip. Don't slander. Don't. And I'll tell you why. And I saw this happen in my life. Hey. I break up with a lady. We were in a relationship. Anthony and the lady. The lady decided to fight me. Yes. Me. God. I forgive her. But a man of God told me. The problem here is that you can't separate Anthony and the office. So the battle is not about you. It's you and the office. And, 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 and he told me, God will allow you to forgive her. But she has dealt with an office connected with God. That matter is hard. Allow me to say this. Aaron was the chief orchestrator of the Golden Calf Fellowship Ministry International. He was their bishop. He's the one who said, bring the rings. He is the, he's the one who initiated and said, behold the God. When judgment came, men died, Aaron was left. It's not that God did not deal with Aaron. 
God preserved an office he gave to Aaron. Because God cannot fight his office. One day, he took Aaron to the mountain and Moses and Eliezer and said, take the garment of Aaron, place it on Eliezer, and then he struck Aaron with death. At that time, the office was out. So, don't see a pastor from a name level. As long as he's in the office, leave him. That battle is hard. Am I making sense? Some of us are trotting this judgment without knowing. And I'm not saying this Kuleta Baridi. I'm saying these are principles. Did you see how David handled Saul? He said, I cannot touch the Lord's anointed. Let, let him die in war or in any other way, but not with my sword. And even the man that brought the news that is dead, he killed the man. He said, you couldn't preserve the anointed. Look at the case of Eli and Hannah. Eli is a backslidden. Should I use the word backslidden? He is an old priest. Eyes are dim. No revelation. He is eating tithe. He is fat at the door of the church. No discernment. Hannah, a young woman, barren, comes and sees Eli on the door. Says, Shalom, Bishop. Shalom. She looks for a corner. Eli feels I need to close the church. And comes. How long shall you be drunk? She says. Bishop. I'm barren. I'm not even drunk. It is the grief. Says, oh, okay. Next year you'll have a child. And true to his word. Hannah. Gets a child. By a man who cannot discern between drunkenness and grief. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Kama mekali ofisi. Ejimu ofi. Wachana namu. Sini mungu wali wake up. And I assure you, it is not a pathway for us to mess. We will deal with God. And, the, and that's why the judgment of pastors will be tough. Because of the truth and the mandate given. But you cannot help God. Are you getting me? Elijah hata tukakosa naji na wewe. Heri utoroke. Are you getting me? Tukakosa na emoji. Hata mimi leo, you know I'm submitted to pastors. There is a church I ran away. Nika jiambia, hapa, uyu pasi tutapitana. Na staki ni ya yongia vibaya, I ran away. I was not released. I ran away. Later after things were settled, I went and said, bless me. And I left. He asked me, why are you leaving? I said, this is on Nini. He was not very happy. There are those people who you have to stay in their church. My prophet, my prophet. And I love him and I honor him. He is a man of God. I didn't call him. Whether he's running church the way I want or I don't want. We, we, me, 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 are we together? The, the last one is malice. Malice. Malice is a desire to inflict injury. To inflict, desire to inflict injury, harm, or suffering because of meanness. It's the desire to inflict injury suffering or harm because of meanness meanness you're just mean you're just mean the other one can be dreams dreams can be used to torment you any dream that does not give you peace leave it delete it discard it keep on dreaming your father is dead your mother is dead you wake up you're sweating the whole day you go to shags if it doesn't give you peace it's not of the lord have i helped anyone some people that's their area and then number six, there is negative atmospheres. You enter in a place and you can sense so negativity. I can't survive here. So these are arrows released to your mind. Missiles. But I wanted to deal with gossip, slander, accusation, malice. 
desire to inflict injury or harm. We can see this in 2 Peter 2.10. 2 Peter 2.10. And, and, and for me, if you ask me, malice is always a problem of the heart. The moment you are hurting, you might end up hurting other people. That's why you must heal. Because if you don't heal and forgive, you become a carrier of bitterness. And a bitter man is a, a serious, a bitter man who will batter many people. Anyone that is out of a relationship, stay between three to six months before you date. Otherwise, you, you might transfer bitterness, anger to another person. Are you getting it? Yes? And especially those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanness, despised authority, they are presumptuous, selfish. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries. They are malicious to authority. Sometimes we do things to people to hurt them. That is malice. You come in a church and break all the windows. Your pastor's cave by boyfriend. In fact, na watu akiuliza, mnataka kati? Mnataka viti? Mnataka kitanda? She didn't have a place to take them. What was the main point? And you miss it. Niende on kitu inaitangwa bended knees. Mwambie, dago daitha. Some of us, ile Holy Spirit tulipokea pia likuwa militant. Alimaliza ni kasema, it is very good now. There is nothing to connect us. Go your way, I go my way. Sela. Na tukanza maisha. Was it easy? The first night nililala kwa cotton. Yeah. I tell you, those are the nights you sleep to rest, you wake up tired. <laughs> Every part of your body is aching. Now go na lalo pumzike. Hi. It was not easy. But again, I knew the intention was to hurt me. So if a person is malicious and they hurt you, they have achieved their objective. So, and I knew the devil does not use cows. The devil uses men. So when you begin to have that understanding, no malicious activity will ever work. Even when my phone was stolen, I just knew this is the devil, this is malice. So I looked at the guy, I laughed, I said I refuse to lose my peace. And I said life has to continue. So tell your neighbor, neighbor, don't be malicious. Now you see that all the things I've mentioned, yes, all the things I've mentioned, you have no capacity to pray against them if you are a victim. And he says, Lord, every time raised against me, I judge it. Mungu na kukumbusha. Gossiper, gossiper, gossiper. You can't judge. And that's why this battle becomes technical. So how do you win this battle? Number one, you begin by repenting. You yourself, you tell God, forgive me for the moments I've gossiped, for the times I've been malicious, for the times of slander, for the times I've done all these things. And the moment now you repent, you have capacity to deal with what men have said. Does it make sense? Now, can we take two minutes? You take two minutes to repent and two minutes to engage. And then we finish this service. Is that okay? Is that okay? Stand up on your feet. Thank you for staying through. Pastor, what happens if a pastor is the one gossiping me and you've told us not to respond? What happens if it's a man of God slandering me and selling malice to me? One thing, go and tell the Lord to fight for you. I know men who have been fought by men of God. I left a church and the, the committee was gathered the man of God said, I'm, I'm wicked. And I was sleeping with all the members in church. And he had warned me about it. And I refused. And so because I'm rebellious, in fact, he kicked me out. So I was walking in town. And people were looking at me, Zileza. So you repent. So me, I don't know the accusation over my life. So everyone 
walikuwa wananisalimia wa kihepa you see the man who said could not be questioned are you getting me and i told the lord you know the truth fight for me another member left he was accused now the member that gave me the story is the one who was the chief distributor of my gossip so he went and told all the young people this man don't even pray for him he's given to the devil the devil will deal with him you know i'm talking about real things am i speaking to anyone simply because you left her and i could feel this not the place so i was soiled so that nobody follows so this man came and repented and said i didn't know the truth so i was the dispenser to warn young people not to associate with you because i knew you're a madman it was painful i felt like i wanted to go to his office live ask me not fanya nini msai so niache ni kwache you know they say in a man there is a king and a fool sometimes you provoke a fool that day the fool was alive so i slept over it the king resurrected i said let me leave it to god so tell your neighbor neighbor don't allow the fool to speak on behalf of the king are you getting me let's just lift up and say lord jesus today i have heard your truth where i operated in malice slander gossip accusation forgive me lord my mouth shall be used for your oracles lord i repent for the times i have raised an accusation for the times i have sought to receive gossip and even to gossip others lord i repent i repent for my malicious deeds deal with my heart even now blot out anything that is not of you cleanse my mouth purge my mouth that i may not be the one to utter death where i am supposed to utter life now make that prayer personal make that prayer personal just tell the lord especially there are some of you that have prophetic graces you have the grace of intercessory some of us our prayers are cut off because our mouths diffuse our prayers just tell the lord cleanse me purge me i told you we are all guilty this is not about a people it's about all of us we have sat in the council of scoffers we have sat in councils even to despise authorities and even to gossip authorities we have sat in places to talk about men we have accused men we have slandered men lord we repent we have heard your word we have heard the wisdom we have heard the truth and today we repent as david made a prayer lord search my heart interrogate the seat of my heart search the dealings of my heart any root of bitterness any root of pain anything that provokes me to utter malice and speak words against men let it be uprooted today in the mighty name of jesus in in the mighty name of Jesus whatever rises as hindrance of my prayer life let it be taken out let it be taken out let it be taken out in the name of Jesus and I want us to make this prayer let's base our argument let's look at Isaiah 54 16 some of us this environment is gonna leave you are we together are we together some of you you have been accused begin from 13 there are even diseases that manifest because of accusation. No, 13. 54, 13. No, I'm looking for the one that says every time. Yes? 17. Okay. No weapon forged against you will prevail and you will refute every now are you seeing that what will you do give me that in message bible let's see this name refute what does it mean it's condemned but no weapon that can hurt you has ever been forged that means made continue yes everybody read that word refute it means to condemn or to judge every time that now i want you to rise and rise against every word spoken against you and i want to tell you 
there are those that you know. There are those that you don't know. Anyone that is a leader in this meeting, I want to assure you, men accuse you. Anytime you're in leadership, you can't run away from this. Either big or small, this is some of the things that bring men down. A man of God was diagnosed with cancer, but the issue was not cancer. It was accusations that empowered demons to attack him with a disease. Some of you, you have pains in strange places. The problem is not the pain. Sometimes accusation can manifest on your flesh as an evidence of pain. Some headaches are a sign. I remember one day, my spiritual father met with a prophet and it was the prophet sharing the story. And the man of God had a sharp headache and he told me, he told him, I'm seeing a lot of witchcraft attacks on your life. The man kept quiet. They made a prayer. It left immediately. Why? Some things manifest in our physicality. That you can feel some pain. Most of the times, people begin to feel either pain on the shoulder, the neck, or even the back. Some funny pains and even headache. And I tell you, at that hour, arrows are being released. Live arrows. That's the time to pray in tongues. Now, begin to pray right now. Canceling accusations. Some of us, we are not sick. We are not sick. It is the intensity of conversation in the realm of the spirit. Everyone under the sound of my voice, I tell you the truth, men carry words and their words carry energy. Everywhere death was uttered. There are businesses that begin to go down because men have been conversing and sharing negative things. Today we are settling the matter in the place of prayer. Every tongue raised against you in condemnation, let it be condemned right now. Every tongue of the accuser, every word released away every word released against your life Pakosa Nima Kapaya was released against your business some businesses are going down because men have attacked the reputation of that business some of us things have been said some were said by authorities and this reality has begun to take shape we are declaring today that every accusation every slander every malice every gossip Every malice, let it come down, let it come down. I say, let it come down. Every word, every atmosphere created by the words of men, let it be scattered, let it be diffused in the mighty name of Jesus. I sense an anointing. Things are being broken right now. Oh my God, oh my God, how I wish you can pray. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Some of us are stagnating because of what has been uttered Kaporia satire I keep on hearing some people have been accused by authorities you have been accused from a very high place this is warfare when you are accused by an authority that is automatically warfare may the Lord intervene may the Lord intervene may the Lord intervene I say may the Lord intervene they are relatives who sit down to accuse us they talk about us they say look at that girl she's not get married maybe she will never get married today we are settling the matter on the place of prayer kapata la paratos empelecatoria imparatosia la paya pecatoria balata where there is an atmosphere of accusation over my life let it be broken let it be broken i say let it be broken let it be broken let it be broken let it be broken be delivered from the tongue of the wicked be delivered from the piercing words of the wicked in the mighty name of Jesus be delivered from every demonic anticipation now take a minute begin to prophesy over your life begin to declare the possibilities of God begin to announce you are moving forward you cannot be limited you are blessed you are getting married it cannot be business as usual begin to announce it is what for what we create our reality with our confession and our declaration it is utterance for utterance declaration for declaration word for word life for death panopa kataya peleria sapola imparora sekataya ipala satolia le sheteles imparosi alapa kalabababosa lift up your hands i declare you are blessed i declare any utterance that has stood against your life 
it cannot prevail. Today we suspend the utterance. Any branding in the spirit, we remove that banner in the spirit. We declare you are a child of God. We declare you are a child of God. The possibilities of Zion will manifest in your life. Any authority that ever spoke against your life, I stand as an authority. I call you blessed. I call you blessed. I call the barren women fruitful in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the cycle be broken. Whatever manifested in your life because of accusation, let it be cut off. I say let it be cut off. Let that power be cut off. Let it be cut off. Every demonic network, every demons that relied on words that were uttered, we cut their operation. We suspend their power. Kapoli Paratosa I declare a cloud of heaven. Open heaven, open heaven. The glory of El Elyon is shining over you. You are radiating the glory of El Elyon in the mighty name of Jesus. I hear God telling me hindrances. I don't know why, but I keep on hearing. Accused by authorities. It may not just be a pastor. Anyone in authority. Let me just make a special prayer for anyone. Just lift up your hands. Accused by an authority. If you've ever, listen, anyone that has been accused by an authority, I want you to lift up your hand. I want to stand as another authority. Some people say you can never prosper because you left me. That is witchcraft. I say that is witchcraft. Witchcraft is manipulation. God connects us with men. Some of them for a season. So they are not supposed, they, you, you, you are not a wife to anyone. Meaning that you are not supposed to stay there until death. Meaning that they, when your season dies, it dies. Father, these are hands lifted. I know the kingdom operates with principles. It took Moses to reverse the utterance of Jacob. And now I stand where that authority stood. And I stand on a higher ground to declare words that were uttered. Let them be nullified. Every curse, every negative word that was uttered, let it be uplifted today. I call these ones blessed and I cut off the power of that word in the name of Jesus. I cut off the influence of those words in the name of Jesus. Let them prosper. Let them move forward. Let them succeed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I say this under the anointing. Every expectation of the wicked. Or any expectation that came from a wicked womb. Concerning your life. It will not succeed. Amen. Are you getting me? There are people who say, Pastor Kevin. Watch out to We cancel that word. They will see you rise. They will see the glory of God. They will see you ascend. They will see you manifest the power of the Holy One. Because your life is in his hands. You are not at the masses of any man. Your life is in his hands. We don't run gangs. And when you leave, we shoot you. These are fellowships. Everyone with their strengths and weaknesses. And we become a family. And when your time comes, we can't force you in a place where your grace no longer flows. So we must release men. Are we together? This is not a cult. It's a fellowship of brothers. Even homes, men are released. They're told now go and marry and prosper. So why wouldn't we bless men? Are we together? Are we together? So don't feel guilty unless you left without order. When your heart settles, go with a seed and tell them release me. It's a spiritual principle. It may be hard, but in your heart, a man came in my office and he told me we have been released. Now we can even take photos in church. Some of you on a camera because the church you left, no one released you. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, that is an authority. Look for a seed, call for a meeting, and tell the authority, God is transitioning me. Bless me. And if they don't bless you, you have done your part. God is a good father and a God of order. Hallelujah. Sit Satisa. 30 minutes can be up kitu to kuja to pray. Ambia beste yako, milango ni zako? Shida ni zako? Sasa nitakuambia aje upate bibi na tutamuwa pamoja. Suku juwambia bibi yako? Bona sana. 
So tell your neighbor, neighbor, come pray for yourself. Are we together? We can join our faith, but just learn, learn the art of praying for yourself. Is that okay? Anyone that made it to this service, don't give anyone prayer item. Don't tell us we are together in the spirit. You are not Paul. You are here physically. You are not in jail. So come and let us pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's just one day and we program the whole month. Are you ready to give? Are you ready to give? Are you ready to give? But before we give, is there anyone who's saying, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus. In the first service, a man came to Jesus. Hallelujah. My goodness, that's the best offering. Anyone who's saying, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus. Tell your neighbor, this is the, our first offering. As you prepare your second, is there anyone? Is there anyone? You backslid on Saturday. We can restore you on Sunday. Is there anyone? Amen. Don't be afraid. You just lift up your hand and then we'll pray for you. Anyone online? Anyone online? I can see you guys online. Is there anyone? I can see you. Amen. Amen. Wow. Tell your neighbor we are doing well. But next time bring fish. Are we together? Let's give our offerings. That one I cannot give. It does not represent me. I know my level. Tell your neighbor you give according to your grace. If you are a millionaire, you give in millions. Are you ready? Let me just pray for your giving. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. And today, Lord, you have blessed us with substance. Blessed us with jobs, businesses, careers. Places whereby we work with our hands and you bless the work of our hands and today dear lord some of us are giving their tenth their tithe because out of a harvest you have instructed us to give a tenth so that you can shield and preserve our harvest as we give our tithes lord we declare that the devourer will be rebuked and our harvest will be sustained as we give our first fruit we connect the harvest to you as we give our free will offering, it is a celebration of your sovereignty and power. As we give our seeds, we respond to instructions that you have given unto us. As we give, oh God, any other manner of giving, we give first because we love you and number two, because we are custodians of your treasuries and resources and we are just surrendering them to you because you have entrusted us. We give because of the demand of the house and the needs of the house so that the storehouse cannot lack and dear lord even as we give we give out of principle to know that it is in giving that we receive and i declare in one another the sound of my voice let the windows of heaven be open and let them attract a dimension of supernatural supply none of them will ever lack something to spend on and even something to deliver in your basket for the glory and honor of your name father thank you we give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So those who are tithing, uh, remember you can give your tithe. It's very key. Amen. Every end month we have very serious budgets. But by your giving we've been able to meet them. So be faithful with your tithe, fast fruits, instructed seeds, free will offering. The moment you're faithful, we'll be able to do a lot. Our conference is coming up in the first week of September. Just hold on. It's coming up in the first week of September. That is 3rd, 4th, and 5th. It will be on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And it will be whole day. So fill your leave day. Let that Friday be a leave for you. Is that okay? The reason why we are doing whole day is so that we can take advantage of the weekend and learn as much as we can. We have already, Pastor Mark confirmed, Prophet Moneki from Nanyuki. This one will be bananas. We have Apostle Juma and Mama Sunta Juma. And Pastor T from Nairobi. I tell you, this one. Ha, this one will be serious. So tell your neighbor, neighbor, come. We are doing it like that because we understand some of the members don't live in Limuru. So we said if we can begin Friday 9 and then we end at 5, 6, it will be possible to attend the whole three days. So that's okay. So that we don't do a meeting and people are watching online. There, there are things, the Bible says when Peter spoke, the Holy Ghost, we want as they are speaking things to fall. It is called the Doxa Conference. Doxa means glory. 
So we are calling it Days of Doxa. So this is DOD. Nasile Akarao. He in DOD Doxa. Are we together? So I want you to prepare early. There will be an online registration form so that we are able to prepare. On that day, we'll have a mobile canteen. So also come ready to buy yourself lunch and a friend. I'm telling you early so that you can prepare. Is that okay? And anything else, I think. Anyone that is watching us live and you want to come, there was some people, the international church, we can, we can facilitate your flights and your accommodation. So the church number is there, 0719 You call that number and then we can facilitate your accommodation. So we are believing God for international delegates. Amen. Amen. So you can go to Gedorai and come from Gedorai. You will be received as an international delegate. Are you ready to give? Now let's share the words of the grace. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Tell your neighbor, grab something. Let's meet at three. You are blessed in Jesus' name.